Hi everyone. In this tutorial we're going to model what is known as a sacred Merkaba. Um, it's a symbol uh, of early Jewish mysticism as well as the basis for Metatron's cube. Uh, this shape has been part of uh, spirituality and religious iconography for ages now. Um, a lot of uh, geometers and mathematicians might recognize it as a stellated octahedron and uh, it's very simple to create in a uh, polygonal modeling application. Alright, so um, we'll just do a very quick tutorial on how to achieve this shape uh, and use it for 3D printing. Alright, so let's get started. I'm going to be working in 3ds Max here. Um, I have my scene units and system units both set to millimeters and to do the same you can just go to customize units uh, set up and make sure you're in metric millimeters and then click on system unit setup and change it to millimeters as well okay so first thing we'll do here is go to extended primitives and uh, bring up the hedra shape all right, and um, immediately we'll go over here and change the radius to 30 millimeters. All right, and um, we're going to use the Tetra family. All right, so we'll change the Q parameter to 1, and we'll end up with this shape. I'm tapping J to get rid of the bond bounding boxes. All right, now tapping W and pulling the object up with the translate tool. All right, so it's it's uh, sitting on the grid here. All right, so from here we'll go over and we'll add an edit poly modifier to the top. And um, what we'll do here, I'm going to go up into my uh, graphite modeling tools, and in the subdivision panel, I'm going to uh, click on tessellate. And uh, if I hit F4 to show my uh, edged faces, you can see what that's done. All right, so let me just really quickly, I'll change the, uh, the color of the object to black, and uh, I'll just drag and drop a, uh, a standard uh, shader on it here. Okay, so now that we have this, we can go down into our vertex mode and uh, select one of these ver vertices in the center of uh, one of the triangular faces. Okay. And then uh, also from the graphite ribbon, we'll select similar to grab them all. All right, all of the same uh, vertices around the object in the center. All right, and then uh, switching to my scale tool, I'll go down here to my uh, absolute mode transform type in, and I'll click it to enable it. All right, and there where it says 100, we will change that to 300 and hit enter. All right, and that's uh, scaled out those points uh, to look like this. Okay, so already this is a Merkaba shape, but we want it to uh, we want to 3D print it, so we're going to go for an exoskeleton type of structure, as you can see here in this render. All right, so. Um, to achieve that, we'll go ahead into polygon mode and holding control, I'll tap A to select all. And I'll hold down shift while I click on bevel to bring up the caddy. All right, I'll change it to uh, by polygon. And um, here in the height field, I'll type in, uh, let's say, 1.5 millimeters. All right, and then in the outline field, I'll type in negative 1.5 millimeters. All right, and so that's drawn out those uh, those edges for us. All right, now with the faces internal faces still selected, I'll go ahead and delete those by just clicking delete on the keyboard. All right, and now with uh, while you're still in face mode, you can see right under the selection rollout is a bivertex ob option. All right, 
click that, put a check mark in that box, and what this allows us to do is select all of the faces uh, by just uh, choosing a particular vertex on the object. So for instance, uh, I'll click on this center vertex right here in this X, and it will select the entire uh, X shape uh, polygons on the object in just one click. All right, now with those selected, uh, I'm going to go up here to my Align panel in the Graphite Tool ribbon, and I'm going to click on Make Planar. All right, so that has planarized all of those selected faces. All right, so I'll just go over here to this next one by just ticking on the uh, center vertex. It selected all those faces, and I'll Make Planar. And uh, I'll just go around the object and do that to all of those X-shaped uh, faces. Alright, so I'm just selecting them and then making planar. Alright, just like this. And then the last one. Alright, so now they're all completely planar and flat. Alright, and that's what we want. Alright, so now we're going to solidify this object. However, um, in this case, we're not going to use the standard shell modifier because uh, we want to achieve a particular effect and um, by using that uh, shell modifier what happens is we end up with some uh, uh, you know it, it just doesn't hold its shape uh, when you use it to the inner amount you can see that these uh, edges are starting to uh, go in on each other and then we can hit straight in corners and it makes it even worse so instead of using shell and having to uh, mess around with it later um, to fix that issue. Um, although we can use it uh, in the outer amount, uh, that's going to change the scale of the model. Uh, and so instead of doing that, there's an easy solution here. We're going to go to our, uh, our element mode and deselect the by vertex and just select the entire object. And then holding down shift with the uh, scale tool still active, just uh, scale down a new element here. and um, you can scale it down by 80% release and then uh, uh, choose clone to element and click OK. All right, so that's done this. And now what we'll do is with that still selected, we'll flip all of those polygons. And then uh, we'll go ahead into border mode. All right, now just back up a little bit so that you can box select the entire object and that will select all the borders and just click bridge here in the graphite modeling ribbon or use your hotkey and that will bridge all of those borders together alright so now we have a solid object as we've wanted and now we'll go into edge mode and with the edges still selected from our border selection we'll go ahead and ring that all right. I just used my ring hotkey, but you can select ring from either the graphite tool ribbon or uh, down here in the command panel for edit poly modifier. All right. So just ring all of those edges and we'll go ahead and hold shift and select connect. And uh, that'll bring up the caddy. All right. So we'll give it two segments and we'll increase the pinch value all the way up to about 90 and then click the uh, the uh, check mark to accept that value. All right, so now we have this topology. And uh, what we'll do from here is go to our polygon mode. And you can see that uh, these inner polygons are already selected. Okay, so that's what we want. If they're not selected, you'll have to go and select them manually, but they should still be selected from earlier. All right, so now with all of those uh, border faces selected, we'll go ahead and hold down Shift while we click on Inset. And we'll just give it a slight inset. Um, in this case, uh, uh, 0 0.3 millimeters is good, and I'll accept that. All right, so you can see it was just a very small inset. And that's just to uh, prepare.
higher for our subdivision surfaces. Um, now, of course, I always say in later versions of 3ds Max in 2015, 2016, uh, you do have the open subdiv uh, modifier, which is fantastic to use. But uh, I'm still using 2012 here, so I'm just going to uh, enable Turbo Smooth and uh, give it uh, a few iterations. And then when I remove the um, the edged faces, you can see that uh, we have a very nice subdivided Merkaba model here. And uh, this is it. And now we could export this as an STL uh, for 3D printing. However, uh, this if you wanted to uh, save on printing cost, you could implement a shell modifier on top of that and uh, just get rid of the outer amount and give it an inner amount. Let's go to, uh, let's see if, can we go to our wireframe view maybe, and um, what we'll do is we'll give it an inner amount of maybe 1.5 millimeters. All right, and um, let's say for some reason my hotkey isn't where it is. All right, so I applied an edit poly on top of the uh, shell, and I switched to my uh, wireframe mode. And you can see what this uh, shell modifier has done. I'll go back down to it, and I'll uh, decrease its value a little bit. And you can see that there's a shell uh, creating inner wall thickness on the object. So actually, 1.5 was a little too much. We might get some crossed edges there. I'd give it an inner amount of maybe 0 0.5 to 1 millimeter. And that should be enough uh, to allow us uh, to 3D print it with an inner wall thickness that's sufficient for most 3D printers, uh, especially on Shapeways. All right. So that's it. This is the model. Um, this model will be available on my Shapeways store, by the way. Um, but uh, you can 3D print it yourself if you want to. This is how to get it. And uh, I appreciate the uh, uh, the watch and uh, hope you like the video. If you do, pre please press the like button and subscribe to my channel. And uh, I wish you all happy holidays. And I'll see you in the next video, which will be coming very soon. Happy holidays, everyone. Bye.